Okay, bye for now. These are truly amazing little devices. With it, I can communicate via a cell phone such as this or a satellite phone to anyone else anywhere in the world at any time. Who were the scientific pioneers behind this technology? And don't we owe them a debt of gratitude for this instant connectivity and for providing this catalyst for social interaction? It was questions like these that got me thinking. More of a curiosity at first. However, it's funny how coincidences play a part in deciding what you might do next. I happened to be visiting my family in North Wales in the UK around this time, and a newspaper article about a scientist with Welsh roots happened to catch my eye. What was more astounding was the revelation that this guy was walking up and down Great Portland Street in London with a portable wireless receiver and a telephone to his ear. Was this the spark that resulted in the cell phone? This looked like an interesting story and one I had to delve into more. It turns out this scientific pioneer was called David Edward Hughes, who had a fascinating life made many discoveries and inventions, was a philanthropist, and that's what this book is all about. My next step was to find out where Hughes's papers and historical records might be. After much digging, I was able to track down one of David Edward Hughes's and his wife, Anna Chadburn's ancestors called Donald Smith. Don had become family custodian and preservatoire of Hughes's papers, journals, letters, and was one of those special persons that you come across every so often. He was full of stories about Hughes's discoveries, his inventions and exploits, and yet despite all this, Hughes the scientist has remained relatively unknown even though each year the Royal Society in Britain awards the Hughes Medal to an eminent physical scientist, which, by the way, this year was awarded to Andrew Geem, the Nobel Prize winner. Don felt Hughes deserved some recognition and should have his day in the sun, and it was his enthusiasm, coupled with a fascinating story of adventure and scientific discovery, that was the inspiration for this book. Of course, when I started, I didn't know it would turn into a 10-year research project. But as I had just retired from the electronics industry, I had the time and what an interesting 10 years it turned out to be. To really understand this scientist though, I first had to try and transport myself back into the Victorian era. No mean feat, when we are now surrounded by all sorts of technological contrivances. When Hughes was making his discoveries in the mid-1800s, electricity was still hiding in the bottle, waiting for scientists to uncork it and discover what on earth it could be used for. To understand what that was like, we must be prepared to sweep away all of today's technology that is reliant on electricity and drive back in history to the starting line where the only components available were coils of wire, magnets and simple batteries. Discoveries were made by experimentation and observation and electrical theory was, well, really non-existent. It was from these simple beginnings that the first real application of electricity was to emerge. And when it did, it was revolutionary for it was to impact our culture, reorientate business and shorten geographical distances. What emerged was the electric telegraph, a device that exploited the phenomena that electricity could basically travel vast distances along a wire instantaneously. Suddenly, 
the time to communicate was reduced from months or weeks to minutes. This was the dawn of electronic communication, which today we cannot function without. David Hughes was one of a number of inventors who seized the opportunity by creating an innovative telegraph instrument that was successfully used both in America and extensively throughout Europe. Hughes went on to make many other discoveries and inventions during his lifetime, improving the telephone to turn it into a practical instrument with his carbon microphone, about which he and Thomas Edison had a right old argument over its discovery, inventing the metal detector which was used to try and locate the assassin's bullet in President Garfield, then his groundbreaking experiment to eliminate the encumbrance of wires to communicate by taking to the airwaves and by discovering that communication could take place through the air by means of wireless in 1879 and 1880. He demonstrated this by setting his transmitter into action at his laboratory and then walking up and down Great Portland Street and over to Portland Place in London, later to be the home of the BBC, with a telephone receiver to his ear and his portable wireless receiver. Hughes was not a theorist and had trouble understanding how electrical signals could travel through the air without wires. He was aware of the force field that Michael Faraday had postulated and today widely exploited in science fiction and wondered if there were similar lines of force at play in his experiment. He was unaware James Clark Maxwell had those answers. He had theorized that electromagnetic fields could in fact travel through space. Unfortunately, Maxwell died at too early an age, just as Hughes was making his experiments. To discover the real David Edward Hughes though, it was necessary to get down into the details of his life and turn over many, many stones, looking for the elusive answers of why he did this or that. There's nothing like visiting the places where Hughes once lived and worked. There's something magical about walking along the same streets or standing in a place where he once worked or holding a piece of his apparatus in your hands. My travels took me to Virginia, to Kentucky and Tennessee, over to Wales and to the Smithsonian and Science Museums of London and Paris. I spent many eye-straining hours with magnifying glass in hand pouring through Hughes's notebooks in the British Library in London, his patents, technical papers and journals, and then his personal papers and letters. However, I was not alone in this venture. As the Hughes project got underway, I was luckily introduced to another Hughes enthusiast by the name of David Ellis Evans, and we joined forces to write this book. So, David, uh, this is the field where uh, supposedly David Edward Hughes was born? Well, some claim it is, but there's no real proof of it. Uh, do you speak any Welsh, Shaila? Uh, Undo, uh, Dippenbach. Oh, that's good. This is a field where the cottage known as Greener Wyrid used to stand. The Marcai place I like Greener Wyrid, who can live a hammer and all. Honor high out of the if David Edward Hughes can lay any more. David's Welsh background and command of the Welsh language became invaluable in unearthing the early life of the Hughes family and their roots in the Bala and Corn area of North Wales. Hughes was one of the first scientists to recognise that as electrical technology grew in importance, a new breed of engineer would be needed to explore innovative applications and design new electrical devices. In his later years, he worked in academia to bring this about and to ensure that students received the appropriate training and guidance. Hughes was also one of the few scientists who amassed considerable wealth from his inventions and upon his death distributed this wealth back into society benefiting the London hospitals as well as a number of professional societies, where that money after a hundred years is still at work today. We hope this book provides not only an interesting and engaging story of Hughes and brings to light the important contributions he made to science and society, but also that it acts as an inspiration as to what can be accomplished through perseverance and innovation. 
to have dreams and ideas and not be afraid to pursue them.